No, I think we've seen enough of this program for a for a while. We'll uh, we'll maybe come back to it later when we've learned a few more things. But the first thing I'd like to get us into now is more pure C++. And that's going to be arrays. So what I'll do is I will create a new project. Um, make it a command line tool. Product name is going to be Andy Arrays, maybe. C++. Again, whatever, whatever your IDE does for this, every single IDE I've ever used has always had a different way of creating new things. So I'll, I'll, I'm happy to go with whatever it wants. So I'll create this under Applications. Um, let's go to the main. This is a kind of a makey file type thing for compiling the program, I think. I'm not entirely sure. And here we have this new main program. Let's uh, let's expand this to fill the screen. I don't need this right hand area for a while. Let's get rid of all this stuff. It's kind of uh, just clogging up the screen at the moment. Do remember though, you do need lots and lots and lots of comments in a program. So I've got the basic stuff here. Let's just run this, see what we get. There we go, hello world, marvelous. Now what I'd like to do is create an array. So let's get rid of this stuff here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, say the thing I'm about to create is, 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 is an int or a series of ints. I'm going to put a little A on the front just to let myself know that it's an array. I'm going to have a few arrays, so this is the first one. Um, but I'm going to say it is an array. That says, this isn't an orange by itself, that's an orange by itself. This is a bag of oranges, and these oranges are ints. There we are. Now, that's actually currently not going to work, because I do need to say how big this array is going to be. I'm going to say, unless we get into pointers later uh, with uh, new and delete, but we'll, we'll get to that later. I'm going to say this is a bag of oranges, and there's five oranges in the bag. Now there's a couple of ways of filling up this bag of oranges. I'll do a primitive way. I'll say a int one zeroth element. So it's a bag of five oranges. The first orange that comes out of the bag has a label on the side and the label says zero, just like a hotel, ground floor is zero. The first thing you see when you walk into a hotel is the zeroth floor. I'm gonna say that's equal to 1000. And the second element, in the bag of oranges called A ain't one, with the label one post-it note stuck on the side is 1001. I'm using these bigger numbers just so that we know which are the numbers inside the array and which are the key indexes to the array. Uh, we'll just finish this off for the five, five elements of the array. Now, I haven't done this for a while. Let's, let's just see what happens if I try to declare a sixth element. Sixth element with a label of five on the side. Oh, doesn't like it. Now, it's past the end of the row. There we are. So we do, we do get warnings and so on. Now, there is actually stuff beyond the end of the row, because all this is doing is marking out a section of memory. I want you to think of a memory register. And lower down in the memory register, in the next couple of bytes, or however many bytes this version of C++ takes to store um, store stuff, there, there is a hole, and inside that hole there might be something. And at the next memory address, there might be a hole with some stuff in. And at the next memory address, there might be a hole with some stuff in it. So we really are almost getting down to machine code with C++, which is why we like it, and that's what makes it fast. This first thing here, this first thing here is, is, is a labelled set of memory, and because it's an int, we get however many bytes in each bit of memory it takes to put an int into, whether that's 2 bytes, 4 bytes, 8 bytes, 16 bytes, 1 byte, whatever. 
But beyond the end of the array, there is stuff. So we can go beyond the end of array. Usually, if we and when we do that, we will give ourselves program bugs. Because there could be anything in here. There could be nothing. There could be a zero. There could be a Z. There could be... Um, there could be Z, 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 Z. There could be all sorts of rubbish in here. So we've got to be very careful in C++. The reason we like it is because it's fast. The reason it's fast is because it's powerful. So when you use it, you have to be extremely careful. Now let's just um, print out these, these things. Uh, I count equals zero. We did one of these a while ago, didn't we? I count, oh sorry, I've not declared I count. I count is an integer. I mean, I'd usually use I in real life, but let's just give it a proper name so we know what we're doing. Well, that's less than five. Go into this loop. At the end of each iteration of the loop, add one on. Eventually we'll get to five. This condition will then fail. Five won't be less than five, and then we'll drop out of the, uh, of the loop. And then we'll just print out the um, oh, this needs to be an informational string. Um, I count another bit of informational string. And we'll put the actual number. So on the next line. Actually, let's just put this whole thing down here so we can see what we're doing. Uh, this is actually going to be the real integer. So now we put I count in here at this point. That's a number. This is the if this comes start at zero. This is just a bit of string information. This will print out the zero. And then this will go to this this bag of oranges and say, give me the give me the orange at position zero, the first orange out of the bag. And then we'll have an end line. Okay, what's what's wrong with this? See how it's what's wrong with that? Ah, uh, yeah. I haven't put the namespace in, have I? It didn't do it for me automatically, so I need to I need to just explicitly declare that the namespace I'm working in in England, so expect English names only. I'm working in a country called standard. So expect standard names. I should have queued both things, that's good. It seems to have done that. Um should that be ready? It should be ready, shouldn't it? Let's give it a whiz. Have a look at this output here. That looks about right, doesn't it? The zeroth element. Um, so again, what we can do is we, we can go beyond the end of this array. Remember, it's a block of memory. There's memory behind it, and there's memory in front of it, which has stuff in. And it could be dangerous stuff. It could be good stuff. I've no idea what it could be. <clears throat> but let's just let's just print out and see what's beyond the end of the array. So position five, which is the sixth element of an array, which only, so we're saying, what's the sixth orange in a bag which only contains five oranges? Now this should give us some spurious information, but it won't necessarily, it's telling us it's got five elements and you're asking for the sixth element. Um, it might give us something that's even valid. There might be a proper integer number in there. You just never know. Let's give it a run. Let's see what happens. There is a one in there. I don't know where that's... That, who knows why that's there? There's some spurious value somewhere that's been set up by something else in the background. Setting that to a one. Let's take a look at position six, then, which is the seventh element in a bag of oranges only containing five elements. You can see there's a lot more junk in that bit of memory. So be very careful with arrays. One of the best ways to be careful is to... So we'll just put an end line on there just so that we know we're not dealing with a proper array. 
just quickly run that. Build file. Oop. Oh, end. Right. Not, it's not the end. It's not the twilight of the gods. There we go. So we can see there that uh, whatever's beyond the end of the rays is a bit messy. Now, one way to do that, of course, is to, uh, again, I won't be super pedantic about this and have a globals file. We'll just do it all in here. We'll have a constant integer called size 5, and we'll set that equal to 5. And then we'll use size 5 here. And then we'll do that there as well. And then that's one way of getting rid of a little bit of hard coding. So it should work still fine, it works fine still. Remember five elements starting at the zeroth element and then this is beyond the end of the array but we still will get to see beyond the array. That's the power of C++. We can mess with array uh, memory almost as much as we want although we will give ourselves problems unless we know what we're doing. So don't run across hot coals unless you know what you're doing. Right, I think that's... Just one last little trick before we um, go down here. You might not even want to do this. What you could do is do this. And then just stick I++ in each of these little slots. Now the I++ starts at zero and then after this operation has finished it then adds one onto itself to one then it's one and then in this operation it's one and then after the operation finishes it adds one on to itself isn't that funky let's give that a run similar output you see but what a lot of people do if they do know the um what's going to be in an array they don't bother with any of this stuff um We'll show you what they do, um, I think, in the next lesson.